All right, guys, continuing on with our Transformers test review, number 39. So I've been spoon feeding you so far, but if I give you a, a question like this, where it's just a written form, um, I'm expecting you to do a diagram and work through it on your own. One of the things we need to do is we need to do a diagram, hand it to our apprentice later on, and then have them wire it exactly the way that we have it set up in our drawing. So it's a matter of creating a drawing to mimic what the customer wants. In this case, I am the customer and this is what I'm looking for. So let's see if we can do a diagram to match, guys. So what do we got? We've got a 600 volt Delta primary. So let's start off with that, guys. We'll start off with our primary here. So we'll draw in three different windings here in a Delta configuration. Okay, uh, so Delta primary and it's 600 volts. So we're gonna put in our lines to this transformer primary. This would be line one, this would be line two, and line three, going to H1, H2, and H3 of our Delta. And we know that the voltage is 600 volts. So let's draw that in there. So our line voltage is 600 volts. And for the delta, we know from previous discussions that the phase voltage is also 600 volts. Okay, what else have we been given? We've been given the fact that it's a 2.8 delta secondary. So we can draw in a delta here for our secondary as well. Beauty. And that delta is feeding a Y three phase resistive load. Okay, so let's put in a Y resistive load. Okay, and this guy is feeding that load, right? So we have a line conductor going over to this guy. This line two is feeding this terminal right here. And this guy is feeding the other side of our Y. No need for a neutral because they're going to be balanced here. Okay, what else are we given? Uh, we're given the uh, secondary voltage, right? At 208 volts. So let's throw that value in here. Our line voltage here is 208 volts on the line. Beautiful, okay. And that tells us that this voltage here is also 208 because on a delta, we have the same phase and line voltage. But the voltage that's impressed across each of these resistors is 120 volts, root three of the 28 volt line voltage. Beauty. Okay, so now we've got a diagram that we can work from with all of our various voltages that are there. Uh, the phase current drawn by each of the Y loads is 200, a disgusting 250 amps. Okay, so let's throw that in there. The phase current drawn by each of the Y loads is 250 amps. Okay, so that means that the current on the inside of this Y is 250 amps, and that's our phase value. Okay, on the Y, we know that our line value is identical, so we'll have 250 amps flowing on that line conductor. That current comes from over here. And so again, our line current over here is gonna be 250 amps. Uh, but the current that each of these windings on the inside of the transformer needs to create is root three less. So we have 250 divided by root three, and that gives us 144.34. Beautiful. Okay, so now we've got our phase current. Uh, the next thing we need to do, since we have our, all of our values on the secondary now, we need to find our phase current on the primary, and we'll do that by using the ratio. The ratio is always based on the phase. So the ratio, we have our prime, easy now. We have our primary, and our secondary voltages, phase values. Okay, 
Okay, so primary uh, phase value is 600 volts on the phase. Secondary is 208 volts on the phase. Again, I could be doing this with the line voltages because they're identical, uh, but the ratio is our buddy 2.88 to 1 that keeps coming up time and time again. Okay, so we have a ratio of 2.88 to 1. Uh, if we have 144 amps over here and we have a lower voltage, this must be a higher current. Over here we have a higher voltage, so we ha should have a lower current there. So on our primary, our phase current is going to be equal to our phase current over here at 144.34 amps divided by our ratio of 2.88. And we find that our phase current ends up being 50 amps. Okay, so on the inside of this delta, I have 50 amps. It's balanced over here, meaning it's balanced over here as well. Okay, and now that we have our current on the inside of the delta, we can find our current on the outside of the delta. This value right here would be our 50 amps times root 3. And that gives us, what, 86.6 amps on the line. Beautiful. Now we've got everything. The last thing we need to find is our VA value, right? Because it looks like we're looking like we're needing to find our KVA rating here. So what we'll do is we'll just double check that our power in is equal to our power out. Let me just scroll up here for two seconds. Uh, so here on our secondary, our VA secondary is going to be equal to V line times I line times root 3. So what have we got? We've got our line voltage of 208 volts. Our line current, that was that disgusting 250 amps on the line. We're going to multiply that by root 3. And when we do 28 times 250 times root 3, I got 90,000. And 66 and what I get for I got 0.64 for my VA value so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna round to 90 kVA for our final value okay we haven't been asked for this up above but let's just make sure that our VA primary is the same because I've been mentioning that we can use this as a double check but we'll do it right now V line times I line times root 3 so here we've got a line voltage of 600 volts, a line current of 86.6. Now I have taken some decimal places off, so it, again, it's not going to be the exact same VA value. But let's see if we punch that into the calculator, what we get. Okay, so let's bring up the calculator here. Um, and we'll just do this quick little calculation here. We have 600 times the 86.6. And then we're going to multiply by the square root of 3. And we got 89,997. So again, the rounding right here has changed my value from this value right here to this guy right here. But essentially, this is 90 kVA. Right? So we can see here that power in is equal to power out. A little bit drunk there. Hang on. These guys are equal. Nice. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to bring those values up top here. So, and I find a lot of people have an, an issue. Uh, for one, I haven't done the chart here. I've done the chart on my printout of my answers there, but I've just slowly and methodically gone through the diagram. And now I want you to grab these values from your diagram here. So our primary line current, that's right here. That's 86.6 amps. Okay, uh, our phase primary current. Okay, so that was 50 amps. Okay, those are our primary values. Okay, secondary line current was 250 amps. Okay, 
Secondary phase current was 144.34. And finally, we found that the load KVA rating was 90 KVA. Excellent, guys. That was a hard question. We basically took this written uh, example up here, and we were able to create a diagram and slowly work through it. And we worked our way back to find our, our total line current on the primary, and then we double-checked that our VA in was equal to our VA out. Last thing we needed to do was transfer these values right here up to here, so we show that we know what we're talking about, and we're done. All right, guys, let's move over to question 40. Okay, question 40. What's the ratio for a three-phase Y 7200 volts and delta 600 volt transformer? And I've given you the note here. Recall that the ratio of the three-phase transformer is on the phase winding. So we have a, a, let's see, a Y primary, right? So let's draw in our Y primary here. Okay, and we have a delta secondary. And what voltages have we been given there? Let's see. Uh, 7200 for our line voltage. Beautiful. And then on the secondary, we know that uh, the current coming off these guys is 600 volts. And those values given are the line values. So we have right here, we got 600 volts on the phase. And here, if we take the 7200 and divide it by root 3, that gives us 41.56. Okay, a little bit of random voltage there, but that's okay. Uh, the ratio there is based on the phase. So our ratio is equal to our 41.56 volts that we have on the phase on the primary compared to the 600 volts that we have on the phase of the secondary. And when you take 4156 divided by 600, your ratio ends up being 6.93 to 1. Excellent. Okay, let's move on to 41. A three-phase four-wire system has a line-to-line -line voltage of 4160. What's the phase voltage? Okay, so that one again, you can do a quick little drawing if need be. So we have a Y connection here. And which voltages do we have here? We've got a line voltage of 4160. Okay, and we know that the voltage on the phase so this voltage right here from line to neutral is going to be equal to our 4160 divided by root 3. And we take 4160 and you divide it by root 3. I got 2401.78. I think we've looked at that value previously. Okay, so this value right here is 2,401.78 volts on the phase. Beautiful, rock it now. 42 guys, a three-phase four-wire secondary has a line current of 200 amps. What's the phase current on each of the secondary windings? Okay, so for that one, it's a Y circuit, right? So again, we can, I mean, there's no need to draw this out, but I'm going to draw this out just so everybody's with me. So we have a circuit here. I've just been in uh, coils here, but we're not sure what the load is. And it says that it has a line current of 200 amps. 
So we have 200 amps on the line. And it's clear that there's only one path for that to current to flow. So we're also going to have 200 amps on the phase. For a Y circuit, we know that V line, sorry, not V line, I line is equal to I phase. And in this case, they're identical at 200 amps a piece. Okay, we're flying through these. I've left uh, like two or three minutes for each question. So you can see that we just took about 30 seconds for each of those guys, leaving longer for um, the previous questions. Okay, next one. We've got a three phase, four wire, a Y connected load, has a phase voltage of 347 and draws a line current of 125. What's the VA rating of this three phase load? All right, again, there's no need to draw this out, but I'm just going to quickly draw this out. Uh, we have a, a Y circuit, right? And it has uh, a line current of 125 amps. That's our line. That means that we have 125 amps on the phase. And we've got three of those guys at 125 amps on the phase. Okay. Any of these line currents on the outside are also going to be 125 amps on the line. And then we're looking for, let's see, we've got a phase voltage of 347. So this voltage right here is 347. And we know that the line voltage, so from here to here, is going to be 600 volts. On the line. Okay, so the easiest way to find this is to do our VA using our line voltage and line current. So V line times I line times root three. So I've done more work than I need to over here, but I just wanted to show you all the values there. Our VA is going to be equal to uh, line voltage here is 600 volts. Line current is 125 amps. And we're going to multiply those guys by 1.732. So our VA value ends up being 129,903. And I got 0.81 VA. Excellent. Okay, the other way we could have found that would was we could have found V phase times I phase times three, and we find a value that's very close to uh, 130 kVA. Okay, let's keep rocking here, guys. Number 44, uh, three identical banks of lights are connected in a Y configuration. The three banks of lights share a neutral. During normal operation, each bank of lights draws 20 amps, and how much current is gonna be flowing on the neutral current in this balanced condition? Okay, so we know that the neutral carries the unbalanced load, Okay, and we can see here that each bank of lights is drawing 20 amps. So we have a Y configuration where each of the loads are drawing 20 amps. Okay, and we want to know, see what our neutral current is going to be here. Well, clearly there is no imbalance between those guys. So it is a balanced load. So that means that there's going to be zero amps flowing on the neutral. And we've had that previous discussion. Don't be lulled into the fact that this is zero current, right? This is not exactly 20 amps. It's like 19.7. Maybe this one is 18.75 and this one is uh, 20.93. So small variations in current are going to give you small neutral currents. But again, only 5 milliamps, 5 milliamps will change the defibrillation of your heart. So be careful. Always treat that neutral current 
or neutral conductor as a current carrying conductor, even though it's not meant to be a current carrying conductor. Okay, so in a balanced condition. 45, if a line fuse were to blow in the, on the previous question, how much current would then flow on the neutral conductor? So what, I want, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in a chart here. So I'm gonna pause, bring in a chart, and I'm going to show you the balanced equation and then the unbalanced load as well. Okay, so uh, short answer is that if you turn off one of those breakers, then the neutral is going to be pulling the same amount of current as the lines. But let's just walk through this slowly. So I have line one, line two, and line three. Each of those guys is pulling 20 amps here. This is pulling 20 amps at zero degrees. Line two is pulling 20 amps at 120 degrees. And line three is pulling 20 amps 120 degrees later or at 240. Each of these values right here are cos of the angle times the hypotenuse, so cos of 0 times 20 gives me 20, cos of 120 times 20 gives me negative 10, and cos of 240 times 20 gives me negative 10 as well. Any of these values over here are sine of the angle, so sine of 0 times 20 gives me nothing, sine of 120 times 20 gives me positive 17.32, and sine of 240 times 20 gives me negative 17.32. So we said that if it was balanced, then the neutral current is going to be nothing. So we can clearly see that 20 minus 10 minus 10 gives us nothing. 17.32 minus 17.32 gives us nothing. And 0 squared plus 0 squared squared gives us no current whatsoever. In the example below, all I've done is I've turned off the C breaker, which means that this current right here is no longer flowing in the circuit. We're left with the 20 amps flowing on A, and the 20 amps flowing on B. We eliminated the C phase, so now we have 20 minus 10 gives us 10 amps for our X for the X component for the resultant. And here we have nothing plus 17.32 gives us 17.32 as the Y component or the opposite value. 10 squared plus 17.32 squared square root gives us 20 amps. So as soon as you turn off a breaker, you're going to have, if the case of a balanced load, you're going to have the full line current flowing on the neutral. And that is definitely going to give you a kick in the pants.